Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome back to another Repent Repentance Word Study. Today we're going to do the book of Kings, Chronicles, and Job. Okay? If you want to turn to 1 Kings chapter 8, and we're going to get started. I'm going to try to knock these out. We're going to start in verse 46. And we're going to read all the way through 52. Starting 46, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, no, there's none righteous, no, not one, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the, the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captive, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And as so returned unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their enemy, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee towards their land, which thou gavest unto their father, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Uh, stop there for a second, just remember uh, Daniel. How he's always praying toward, towards Jerusalem and Babylon. 49, because this is what it's talking about. Uh, this is the whole thing, we'll get to it. 49, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee and give them compassion before them who carried them captive and they may have compassion on thee. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine enemies may be open unto the supplication of thy servants, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. Uh, basically this is asking, at the time you had the tabernacle, uh, that Moses told them how to make, and they made it, had the Ark of the Covenant, and then later Solomon built the temple and that's where you had to go to do your um, sacrifices and oblations and get forgiveness from God. So this is talking about that you read throughout the whole testament where the Jewish people would um, uh, how to say it uh, they do right by the Lord and he bless them and when they did wrong by the Lord he gave them into their enemies hands and the biggest uh, time period was Babylon when they got sent to Babylon, but it's talking about that that God would hear them with their um, repenting and sacrifices in another place in the enemy's territory. If you want to say it like that, but remember, First Kings eight forty seven. If yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive and repent, there's our word repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive. In other words, they're you know, prisoners, slaves, not prisoners, but slaves, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. Now, like I said before, if first, you go back to 46, if they, sin, if they sin against thee, see, when they sin against God, they were punished. And sometimes that punishment was God giving them into the hands of their enemies. Okay. Uh, Israel sinning against God, talking about Israel sinning against God and God delivering them to their enemies, um, and then even though they're in their enemies' hands, that their repentance will be heard. But there's a few things there. Okay, let's see. Definition number five in theology: to sorrow or be pained for sin, a violation of God's holy law, a dishonor to His character and government, and the foulest ingratitude to a being of infinite belief. Uh, benevolence. Now, so that's the con uh, context of repent in this passage. But I also like to point out that it said repent and make supplication. Once again, people try to say that repent means works. When you repent, it's works. Uh, no, it isn't. So far, we have yet to see repent where it means works. Repent is something that happens in your heart and make supplication. So usually, so far, um, there's works before you repent and there's works after you repent. But the actual repent part 
There's no works. It's something that happens in your heart. So the whole point of this study is people attacking repent, biblical repentance when it has to do with salvation. Um, also that they confessed it with their lips. Remember it said, um, Captive and repent and make supplication, verse 47, unto thee the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. Um, confessing, okay? True repentance is followed by uh, confessing uh, with your lips. Kind of like salvation is. You repent, you believe, and you confess both in prayer. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Unto, before salvation. So context there. Sorrow or be pained for sin. Okay, if they truly repent, uh, they're asking God to hear them. Even though they're in the land of enemies, they're not in the promised land. All right. Now if you want to jump to the next book, that's the only time repent is mentioned in Kings. So 1 Chronicles 21.15, if you want to turn there, that's the next time the word repent is used. So far, I'm learning that repent, and I kind of, the whole point of the study was to go through and get the context to prove A, that when God repents, He's not a sinner. When we repent, we're sinners. And that repent itself isn't works. Okay? So far, we have yet to see repent being works. We have yet to see repent meaning that when God repents that he's a sinner. Okay. So 1 Chronicles 21.15. This is a rehashing, the retelling the story at 2 Samuel 24.16. And we went over that in the book of Samuel of the word repentance. So we're going to go over it quickly. King David, just give a summary. King David, instead of relying on God's strength, he decides to number the people of Israel to see how strong they are. When their strength is supposed to lie in, in God, God is supposed to be their strength and is their strength, just like He is our strength. Um, I can do all the things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So he numbers the people, and a prophet goes to him and says that he has sinned, and God's going to have three punishments you can choose from. And he chooses the one about the plague, and God sends an angel to destroy. And we're going to read this real quick. 1 Corinthians 21.15 and God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. That's the key here, to destroy it. God commanded Jerusalem to be destroyed. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. That right there should give us the definition. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Now, 2 Samuel 24, 16, this is a retelling of that story, but why that's so telling, the command was to destroy it. Then, then God said, you know what? That's enough. So what is that? He said destroy it. Now he's saying stop, that's enough. In other words, don't destroy it, Jerusalem. So that's definition number four. Apply to the supreme being a change uh, to change the course of providential dealing. Okay? So change in how God's going to deal with that situation. First, He's going to destroy Jerusalem. Then He says, you, you know what? I repent. I'm changing the providence. You're not going to destroy Jerusalem. Stop. It is enough. Okay? Once again, God is not a sinner because He repents. Repent does not always have to do with having sorrow for sinning against God. Uh, words have meaning. There's more than one definition to words a lot of times. So that's the only mention of repent in 1 Chronicles 21 15. It has to do with God changing his providence, how he's dealing with that situation, with that sin, with that punishment. And brothers and sisters in Christ, rejoice and give thanks that God is that way. Because there's a lot of times, I almost a lot of times, too many to count where I deserve to be destroyed. I deserve to die a horrible death, especially when I was lost. But even today, I deserve to be punished hardcore for a lot of things I do, and God shows mercy on me. It starts out with punishment, and it doesn't become as bad as it should be, because God has mercy and grace towards me and towards you, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
But Job 42 is our next one, chapter 42. For me, Job's always a tough book, um, but it takes the Holy Spirit, and God's been opening some things to me. And um, the whole book of Job, Job didn't do wrong, like he didn't sin. He wasn't being punished because he sinned. Um, there's two things in your life, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you have bad things happen to you, one, it is because you've sinned. You've made choices, and now the, the, you have to face the repercussions of those choices. You live by the flesh, you shall die. You go out and buy a $50,000 car, uh, now you have debt. And now you, you have sorrow because you have all this debt, and a lot of your paycheck's going towards that car. Um, but the other part is God humbling you. Okay. Uh, third, I guess there's a third one, it's the lost world persecuting you for being a Christian. But there's times where God will do it to humble you. And then Job, God's doing it to prove to us as we read this that um, you can be righteous and still have bad things happen to you. But he's also proving Satan, you know, this whole book, like I said, it's, it's a tough book for me. But that's the whole context here. But when I did the study and back in a Bible perversion, so I have to redo the study, but one thing I noticed, even in this, Job did do something wrong. He didn't sin, but he did do something wrong. He questioned God. God, why is this happening to me? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why are you doing this to me? So Job chapter 42, so Job is not, it's like almost like he's complaining. How many of us have complained before to the Lord? Uh, and not following the verse that's, um, which I'll read again, but I'll say it now too. Um, All things work together for good to them that trust God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Um, Job's two friends here, so I'll get to, I'm getting ahead a little bit. So the context where we're starting out is, is Job starts asking God why. Why are you doing this to me, Lord? Questioning God. Then God talks to him and says, who are you to question me? And that's when Job... This is when we're getting to the repentance part. Job repents of questioning God. Why have you done this to me? So Job 42, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withheld from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Questioning God. Things to one... Uh, things too wonderful for me which I knew not. For here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes seeth thee. Wherefore I pour myself, for what he did, I pour myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, The Lord said to Ephraim, uh, remember uh, God corrected Job, I just want to make sure that it was Job speaking, (laughs) sometimes you get doubts. Verse 7, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee. And against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the things that is right as my servant Job hath. Okay. Every time they tried to get Job to say he sinned against God and that God is punishing him, Job at first was trusting God. You know, uh, he was had such sorrow, all this stress, all these bad things were having, happening to him. But I believe over time, the pressure got to him to where he did start questioning God towards the end. But why you question God? Um, in this world, we have a lot of people that pressure us, but that's not the main part of this teaching. It's the context. So when Job is repenting, there's two definitions this could fall under. Uh, definition number one, to feel pain, sorrow, or regret for something done or spoken. And this one, I put that one as the main one because he's repenting of what he said. Okay. You get up to uh, verse 3. It says, Therefore have I uttered that um, I understood not. Okay. He questioned God, 
because he didn't understand why this was happening to him, what was going on. And God set him straight. But someone could argue for definition number two to express sorrow for something past because it's something he did in his past. But not super, super past. It was just recent. So I still stick with definition number one, something done or spoken, sorrow. Notice I didn't put down sorrow for sin. It's just sorrow for something spoken. He, he fell into the, the, the asking God, why is this happening? And I've had brothers in Christ out there do the same thing. Um, and like I said, so far in my studies, three reasons why bad things will happen to you. Chastening of the Lord. You're living in sin. And there's consequences for your actions and your decisions in life. Now God, like I said, will show us great mercy, mercy we don't deserve, and grace. Um, sometimes God's humbling us. He's re reminding us to be humble, to always give thanks, okay, um, and give God the glory. And the third thing is, is persecution from this world. You're going to suffer for standing for God's word and, and su uh, suffering from the world. But here in context, to feel pain, sorrow, regret for something done or spoken. Uh, I believe Job had sorrow, regret for the words he said to the Lord. Why are you doing this? And he starts talking, you know, starts falling into the negativity. Why are you doing this, Lord? Uh, questioning God. And that's a big thing today. A lot of people question God. But that's the context. We got through three books. <laughs> Not many in these books, just one each. So, so far we've seen that repentance, when it comes to God, is a change in providence. Repentance, when it comes to man, it has to do with sin, having sorrow for sinning, or having regret for doing something in the past that you don't want, you shouldn't have done. It's not necessarily a sin, but you did something that you realize later didn't work out right, that you shouldn't have done it. Okay. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next repent, Repentance Word Study.